Prime Minister Netanyahu, thank you so much for joining us. A central part of the ICC's charges against you and Gallant is, quote, starvation of civilians as a method of warfare. Now, I know that Israel repeatedly claims that enough aid is getting in and there is not a purposeful starvation and those claiming otherwise are misinformed are lying. Is Israel going to send a delegation to The Hague to present any evidence to defend itself? I think these charges are exactly as President Biden called them. They're outrageous. They're beyond outrageous. This is a rogue prosecutor that has put false charges and created false symmetries uh, that uh, that are both uh, dangerous uh, and, and false. And uh, the first false symmetry is he equates the democratically elected leaders of uh, Israel with the terrorist tyrants of uh, Hamas. That's like saying that, uh, well, I'm issuing, the, you know, arrest warrants for uh, FDR and Churchill, but also for Hitler. Or I'm uh, issuing uh, arrest warrants for uh, uh, George Bush, uh, George W. Bush, uh, but also for bin Laden. That's absurd. Secondly, the charges are completely false. Let's take this charge of uh, starvation. We've put in 500,000 tons of trucks, of uh, food and uh, medicine uh, for this uh, population. We've taken 20,000 trucks. We've paved roads to put those trucks in. We've uh, opened border crossings that uh, Hamas closed down. I've had airdrops that have facilitated sea route supplies. I mean, the whole thing is absurd. You should know this. I mean, uh, the prices of food in Gaza has dropped by 80 percent. The markets don't lie. Uh, they talk about 23, I think, or 30 cases of malnutrition, a population of 2 million. Okay. The United States in 2022 had 20,000 mm -hmm. deaths of malnutrition. That's three times more than in Gaza. This is completely false. It's the kind of slander that has been leveled at the Jewish people for ages, and it's renewed now against the Jewish state. It was false then. It's false now. But one thing, this prosecutor, this rogue prosecutor, mm -hmm. didn't even bother to come here. He said he'd come here to check the facts. He didn't check the facts. He just went out and demonized the Jewish state, and he's taking the ICC down the route of the General Assembly that passes infinite resolutions, flat-earth resolutions against Israel, or the Human Rights Council that used to have a reputation that is completely blown because half the resolutions are against right. Israel, not against Iran, not against North Korea, not against Syria. It's the same thing. It's uh, outrageous. So... And false. Uh, we and dangerous because it endangers every democracy. We should note, though, it's not just the ICC expressing concerns about the lack of humanitarian aid getting into Gaza. President Biden and his administration and their officials, not to mention European allies of Israel and their officials, they've all been making this case for months that Israel is not letting enough aid in. So when President Biden expresses concern about you not letting enough aid in, is he wrong? Well, no, we had the same concerns. We were trying to get the aid in. We got the aid in, and Hamas was looting the aid. That's what was happening. Uh, they were taking it for themselves uh, or extorting the population. Uh, we were letting the aid in from the start. And look, I've been, this was my directive from day one. The day one thing was we have to provide, we comport with international law. We comport with the rules of war. We have to get those trucks in. We're getting hundreds of trucks every day in. And that's, uh, that's been uh, an aspect of our uh, conducting conduct of war because we try to get civilians out of harm's way. We've done things that no country, no army has done in history. It's not me saying that. It's General Petraeus saying that. Uh, the uh, head of the uh, urban warfare at West Point, Colonel John Spencer, says it. Israel has gone out of its way both in humanitarian aid and getting civilians out of harm's way with millions of text messages, uh, millions of phone calls uh, and leaflets that we've been dropping, giving up the element of surprise. Israel is given here a bum rap. It's, uh, I think it's dangerous because basically it's the first democracy that is uh, uh, being taken to the dock when it is doing exactly what democracy mm -hmm. should be doing in an exemplary way, I think it will endanger all other democracies. Israel may be first. You're next. Britain is next. Others are next, too. And the second thing that is dangerous about this, Jake, is I think this fans the fires of anti-Semitism that are raging on American campuses and throughout Western capitals. They're pouring gas. He just poured gasoline on it, this mm -hmm. uh, rogue prosecutor, Khan. So because... You know, people initially will think this is serious. They think the ICC, this is a serious thing. It's not. Well, it's a travesty of justice, and it's a pack of lies. Let me ask you, because what Hamas did on October 7th, just to make this clear, what Hamas did is abhorrent, as is the refusal to return the hostages. Oh, abhorrent. But whether or not it was Israel's intent 
Tens of thousands of innocent Palestinians, including countless children, have been killed and maimed by the IDF in your war against Hamas. Is there anything you and the IDF could have done any differently to avoid all the loss of innocent lives in Gaza? First of all, every civilian casualty is a tragedy. Uh, every child lost or every woman lost or every innocent person lost is a tragedy. But for Hamas, it's a strategy. So while we go out of our way to get them out of harm's way, Hamas goes out of its way to keep them in harm's way, shooting at them if they try to leave the, the battle zones. But many have left, uh, 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 thankfully I can say that. Now, the ratio, because of our actions, the ratio of civilians to combatants killed is the lowest in the history of, uh, of urban warfare, and certainly dense urban warfare like this. It's about one to one. There are about 14,000 uh, casualties uh, of 50, 14 to 15,000 terrorists killed and, pro and an equal amount of civilians that were unfortunately killed because that's what happens. But in other arenas, in Fallujah, with uh, a handful of uh, terrorists, 3,000, 4,000 compared to 35,000 in Gaza, uh, the ratio was much bigger than that. The same thing in Mosul. So we've gone out of our way to stop it. And let me tell you, I, I think that the numbers are also inflated. You know, the UN... Uh, the, the UN uh, organizations that are dominated by Hamas in Gaza is giving false information, as is Hamas itself. Mm. And people believe these numbers. The other day they came and said, well, you know, it's about 35,000 who are killed, but 10,000 of those we said are women and children. Now we can't say that. We don't know who they well, are. Whatever the numbers so they, are, you know, it's too in many. In the meantime, the lie circles. Well, look, yes, one is too many, but the reason they're there the reason we have civilian casualties at all is because Hamas is preventing them from leaving. I'm happy to say that in the Rafah operation that we've conducted, uh, a million people actually left. People said, well, there are a million people, uh, a million point two, uh, in uh, Gaza. Where are they going to go? They're going to be trapped. Well, a million, 950,000 have already left. Mm. And there are very few civilian casualties because we're doing everything to get them out. This so is our policy. It's humanitarian. It's responsible. We comport with the laws of war, and we're the ones taken to the dock. And it doesn't give any uh, <laughs> it doesn't give any solace that they're also taking these killers of Hamas, these murderers, and putting them in the dock. As I said, yeah, Hitler's in the dock, but so is FDR, and so is Eisenhower. Absurd. After seven months of unity for your wartime government, there seems a lot of disagreement now about your plans for Gaza or lack thereof after a major military operations in Gaza is over. Benny Gantz uh, wants a plan, or he says he's going to leave your government. Your defense minister, Yoav Gallant, says you don't have a plan. He's basically accusing you of trying to lay the groundwork for an occupation, either civilian or military, in Gaza in the future. Are you denying that the plan is for an occupation of Gaza, or are you taking it off the table? No, I have a, I have a very clear plan. I, I think the first thing, the, the day after Hamas... Uh, Jake, is the day after Hamas. We have to get rid of Hamas, otherwise there's no future for Gaza, no future for peace, and it'll be a tremendous victory for, not only for Hamas, but for the Iran terror axis that backs it and organizes Hezbollah, the Houthis, and all these other sundry terrorist organizations. Uh, uh, so I think we have to defeat Hamas, and we will defeat Hamas. Uh, Rafah is the last stronghold of uh, Hamas uh, terrorist battalions. We'll defeat them. That ends the, uh, the intense part of the fighting. But once Hamas is defeated, what we have to do is have sustained demilitarization of Gaza. And yes, on this, I think the only force that can prevent the resurgence of terrorism uh, for, the, for the foreseeable future is Israel. At the same time, we want, I want, a civilian administration that is run by Gazans who are neither Hamas nor committed to our so destruction. So you're taking it off the and table. the third thing that we need to do is, no, I'm not. I'm putting it on the table, on the contrary. No, you're, that's not I'm, true. I'm saying you're taking fact, off a, a, an Israeli occupation of Gaza, of Gaza. You're taking off the table an Israeli if occupation. You mean, if you mean resettling, if you mean resettling Gaza, I'm, yeah, it was never in the cards, and I said so openly, and some of my constituents are not happy about it, but that's my position. The third thing that I would, uh, uh, I would do is uh, uh, have a reconstruction of Gaza, uh, if possible, done by uh, the moderate Arab states and uh, the international community. That's... Demilitarization, civilian administration by local Gazans who are not committed to Israel's destruction and mm -hmm. uh, responsible reconstruction. That, I think, is a realistic plan, and I've said so. Look, if some people are not happy with it, maybe they want to uh, put in the Palestinian uh, Authority that is, uh, still teaches its children to, uh, 
uh, you know, uh, seek the destruction of Israel, pays uh, terrorists. The more terrorists, the more Jews they kill, the more they pay. Uh, supports terrorism. That's not my position. I want a different future for Israelis and Palestinians alike. I, I two, think it'll affect the future of peace in the Middle East, too. Two, two more questions for you, sir, because I know uh, your time is, is limited. Three people familiar with the ceasefire discussions that fell through earlier this month tell our reporter, uh, Alex Marquardt, that Egyptian intelligence quietly changed the terms that Israel had already agreed to in order to get Hamas on board. Uh, does this raise concerns for you about Egypt being involved moving forward? Look, uh, I, I think we have a goal, which is not only to defeat Hamas, but also to release the hostages. Uh, my government has been able to secure the release of 124 hostages so far, and we're committed to get the rest. Uh, Hamas, unfortunately, has been uh, uh, hunkering down on a demand that is simple. They say, well, we can release the rest of the hostages, maybe. But in order to do that, you have to get out of Gaza, end the war, and allow us, basically, to regroup and reconquer Gaza. And they vowed to commit the October 7th massacre, this horror of beheadings and raping of women, beheading women after they rape them, the burning of babies, the slaughter of the innocent, the taking of hostages. We'll do that again and again and again. So that's something I won't agree to. And I hope Egypt uh, understands that we can't agree to something like that. That's mm -hmm. not... Uh, something that we can countenance, and neither can the people of Israel. By the way, the overwhelming majority of Israelis support this policy. And I can tell you that uh, the other day, by the way, yesterday, we had a resolution in the Knesset where 106 out of 120 Knesset members supported a, a, a resolution that says you cannot accept the ICC uh, statement. You cannot accept it. We'll reject it. It's a farce, and we have to stand up Wait, to it. And I can tell you, I don't remember that Israelis, um, I don't remember the Knesset agreeing, 106 Knesset members out of 120 right, but, agreeing on anything. But, Mr. Prime Minister, you say that the majority of the American people are with you on this plan, but a poll from the Israel Democracy Institute from this month showed a majority of Israelis, 56%, say getting the hostages back home should be a higher priority than military action in Rafah. So don't you just fundamentally disagree with the majority of the Israeli people? Well, I've seen other numbers, but I, I take a different thing. I don't say this is more important than that is more important. I say both of them are important. And in fact, the military action that we're taking against Hamas is, the, in fact, the way to get these hostages. Because without military pressure, basically without, you know, squeezing them, uh, Hamas is not going to give up anything. That's the reason they gave up the first uh, half of the hostages, and that's the reason they'll give up the second half. So I don't see, I see them as complementary and not contradictory goals, and uh, I intend to fulfill both of them. Before you go, sir, um, we should note, well, we appreciate your talking to us. Uh, according to the independent Israeli media monitor, The Seventh Eye, you've done about two dozen interviews since October 7th, but all of them in English, and all the outs outlets outside Israel I don't want to begrudge that. I appreciate you doing an interview with us, but why are you not speaking with Israeli journalists uh, the way you are with me? That's the tendentious reporting of uh, some of a lot of the Israeli um, uh, media. So I can tell you what they're not telling you is I've done. Uh, I, I don't know if it's two dozen uh, or, uh, or twenty or fifteen press conferences with Israeli media. They can ask anything they want, and they do. And I just met Israeli reporters the other day in Rafa, in fact, uh, three days ago, and they asked me all the questions they want. So uh, that's simply not true. Uh, I speak to them, and I speak to you, uh, and I welcome the opportunity to tell the truth uh, and dispel the lies in both, uh, in both uh, uh, mediums. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, thank you so much for your time. appreciate it. Thank you.